and we don't want to live our lives, uh, which is the way many of us have grown up as women in our society, so that we're limiting our behavior, so that we're restricting our activities. That's a very intimidating way to go about your life because of your fear of being assaulted. However, we can live our lives with a level of assertiveness and awareness that makes us know that we're making choices. I know that I'm going to continue doing the activities and participating in the, the kinds of things that I do now, whether they're at night and whether they're in lousy neighborhoods or whether I'm wearing bathing suits or, or clothes from my ears to my toes. But I want to know that I'm making choices into my, as to the kind of behavior I'm using that limits my vulnerability and gives me maximum control over my environment. To defend himself or herself in the event of an attack. But our commission believes the greatest defense for women who are victims of violence and aggravated assault is for all of us to become part of the decision-making process and to change the existing attitudes of all people toward women that we're trying. <laughs> and you're doing a wonderful job. If the same sort of energy and thought were put into the other counties and, the and therefore more responsive to potential and actual victims of rape, incest, spouse and child abuse, and crimes against the elderly. Ultimately, it appears we must deal with systems. We must network, cooperate, and sit around a table and hash things out. Pasadena is a small city, gifted with fine public agencies and community-based services. Despite its size, it is a microcosm of the totality of urban society and therefore can readily serve as a model for urban problem solving. The commission-sponsored ad hoc committee on crisis services was born last June when staff of crisis service hotlines expressed to us, you know, um, we've already had numerous conversations on this subject, and uh, um, what we have been told is that the fear for individual safety for the officers is so great because of of the statistics of, uh, of officers in the line of duty being harmed or, or killed in family violence situations, um, that there is a lot of individual discretion given to each officer who comes on the scene, and each case is just a little bit different than the one they went to before. And, um, and so this is a problem, and we're, we will continue to work on this. Because it's, it's not an excuse, though, I don't think. I mean, that's, uh, yes, there are a tremendous number of, uh, percentage-wise, of, of uh, police officer killings uh, on domestic calls. But I'm thinking more in terms of after the parties have been subdued and the police officer looks to the woman and says, hey, lady, do you want to do anything about this? Why don't you just go home? Come, um, have told such different stories about what an officer had said, of course, they've seen all different officers and, um, and how they've handled it. And Have so you that's been monitoring why, that? Uh, the Haven House has, the, the shelter, has done that and has a uh, full record of those kinds of things, yes. And so uh, we are, you know, we're working on it. But, uh, you know, the important thing is to standardize um, some procedures and particular training and sensitization in this area. Um, in the meantime, it's really important so that women do feel that they have an advocate when a police officer comes on the scene. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments? The newly established research and demonstration center here in Southern California, the LA Commission on Assaults Against Women, which operates a rape crisis center and has people deal with their vulnerability. And there we want to talk, uh, present the issue of choice as a key factor. Um, and that is that we of the ways in which they can uh, be free of, uh, of victimization. So again, our approach emphasizes the reduction of the risk of assault. The assertive stance, or one which relays the message that I take care of myself, 